a pleasant good evening. Oh, today we are privileged to be in the blessed company of Mangibi District No. 3 representative in person of Honorable Ellen Atto. Is it a representation, madam? Honorable Ellen Atto Reyes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yesterday we witnessed a, a bill that was presented to be passed at the lower house of representative. Firstly, are you in favor of the bill? Yes, I'm in favor of the bill. Why? I'm in favor of the bill because the bill is a good bill. And a few people were here yesterday, indeed, I think I monitor our movements. I was up and down talking to my colleagues for signature to what's that bill. The bill is a good bill. The bill is not only for the protection of women. It is for the protection of women, children, and the men. So it's not that the bill is a biased bill that focuses only on the women. No. The bill is for everybody. What are some of those things contained in the bill that you think are important that, that, that you will be you know, pushing for it in the process at the end of the lower house? Okay, first, uh, let me just encourage each and every one of you, if you don't have a copy of the bill, you should have a copy I can give you guys a copy before you leave this place today. Uh, there are a lot of good things in the bill because before it was uh, the domestic violence bill, but now it is domestic violence act. This is the uh, the, the bill. It's now called the domestic violence act of 2019, and this is the joint committee report because it was sent to three committees: the committee on judiciary, good governance, and gender. So I will be part of that uh, uh, meetings that we have had, including the hearings. The bill, in short, I would just say that that bill is a bill to help us govern ourselves to see how we can live in peace in society because if you're trying to get rid of violence in society, that if a man should carry on a violence act, he or she will be punished. Uh, uh, it goes to the men and the the women as well. So for example, we found something they call stalking that was most of the, the talk of the time yesterday. Why are you saying that if the man is talking his wife, it is a, a crime or it's a violation? We say yes because of the extent that when he was talking somebody that they become uncomfortable. But if the man will do it to a woman and it is an issue, the woman doing it to the man is also an issue. So it did not say in the bill that only when a woman is being stalked by a man, then it is a crime. It is an open bill for both men and women. So there are a lot of things that will just teach you at the end of the day how to live in peace with, with each other so that we can have a peaceful society. So I will ask each and every one of you again to please take your time and read this bill so you can have a proper um, understanding um, uh, of this bill. Um, the portion of the bill that you can be referring to mm -hmm. is Sticky issues that most of your colleagues uh, wonder. Uh, our marital affair in our country, there's a law that backs that. If I got married to a lady, she's entitled to what belongs to me. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I'm entitled to what belongs to her. But the bill seeks to somehow abolish some stuff. Do you think it's fair if you find yourself in a marital uh, range for you to not have access to your, your husband? Belongings. You, you, it's not everything that's in it. So I don't want you to look at it from that uh, holistic point. I will say to you that even we should all be real when you go for counseling. Those are some of the things that they will say to you during the counseling period. Learn how to respect your partner's privacy. So when they say privacy, it comes in so many forms. It means that you people are not married. For example, from my work that I'm doing, I'm a politician. My husband is also a politician, but is he a legislator? I will tell you no. There are some things that we will discuss as legislators. He shouldn't have access to that information. For example, some of the things that we discuss in executive that are meant for the public right away, and we have having object that we want to discuss it. Having access to my phone, we have access to the information. So it's not that they are depriving the, the partners from having rights to each other as it is stated in the marital vows. You don't think more men and women will be losing their household, their, their, their household as a result of this bill, if it is passed? 
No, no. no. The first thing, if you listen to me earlier, I spoke, I said, it's just about teaching us or wanting us to live in peace. I have my husband, he's a young person, I'm a young person. So, because of that friendship that is there, I don't think the big deal why he will say, oh, sweetheart, let me use your phone and I will not want him to go into my phone. I can tell you, use my phone, but you cannot go into this group chat my phone because it's my privacy, it is what I don't want it in. If you have that mutual understanding, I don't see how that confusion will come in. Are you but in when he, with Article 5 of our Constitution for my end, finally? Are you in consonant with Article 5 of our Constitution that talks about our preserving of cultural norms mm -hmm. and some practices? Mm -hmm. So let, let me. I, I will. I will give the question back to you. If you talk about the cultural norms, what are you referring to? Give me an example. Let's be practical. Yes, so our our, our ma marital law also talks about what are Jeremy referring to when mm -hmm. it comes to having access to mm -hmm. some of your belonging, mm -hmm. whether it be a male or female. And, and this time around, this bill, mm -hmm. the intent of that bill, if you look at it critically, mm -hmm. it seeks to. Uh, so, if you're talking about that, you're talking about marital rights. Mm. So, it is my husband's marital right to have access to me, right? Mm. So, if my husband tells me on a Tuesday, listen, we are married, we are husband and wife, I don't see the need for you to go to Capital Building, so stay home. So, are you going to tell me that because we are married legally, he's, he has that right over me, so I shouldn't go to work? I have two so that's that's some of the things that we are looking at. So just in as much as it is your right to tell me what to do because I made a commitment to you, I don't think you should also infringe on my rights. You know that I'm a politician. You know that I have to be to work. You know Tuesday and Thursdays are day service and for session. So how will you tell me not to go to work? So now you tell me not to go to work because it is your marital right. So okay, fine, I will stay home. Now is your time to. They are supposed to go and sign this contract. I say, no, that's my marital right. I don't want you to go and sign your contract. Stay home. Is that the kind of society that we want? No. We should have that freedom. We should be able to communicate. So I don't want you people to see the bill as a bill that are uh, uh, going to bring, that will bring confusion in homes. That is not the intention of this bill. Okay. So you cannot compare it in that case. Honorable, my name is Vanekamara, and I'm right for 1194. Uh, I have a couple. Okay. Uh, tomorrow you're going to go into a crucial debate, mm -hmm. passage of the bill. Do you have a particular message that you want to be taking on the floor to uh, your colleagues, probably to convince them? Uh, from what I understand, I listen to you carefully. Mm -hmm. It appears that you are already a signatory to those who are going to pass this bill, and probably you're going to be galvanizing some support on the floor. So, what particular message uh, we hope to take to the floor tomorrow to convince your colleagues? Who still feel that uh, the state have more talking to do other than acting now? Two, um, there is a particular concern about this bill that talks about respecting our tradition. A lot of people feel the bill is more Western than actually representing our culture. Mm -hmm. Where do you stand on this? Okay, to address your, your first concern, yes, I'm a signature of this bill. Apart from me being a female, in that committee as the secretary on the committee on judiciary i was able to to lobby with my colleagues and i got signatures and i still want more signatures because i read this bill when they raised the issue yesterday some of them did not have time to read the bill i agreed to them that you should be able to read this bill analyze it for yourself if you think there should be an amendment when it's passed or it should be done now before passage into law it is something that we, we are open to that and I did because as I said, this bill is not only for the women. When last uh, year we had in the canon, some issues that were in this bill that I have with the bill, I made uh, my reservations clear and were able to visit the bill. This bill is a good book. I've encouraged all of my colleagues and I believe that between yesterday and today, they will be able to read the bill before we reach tomorrow, the hour session time. So, during that period, they will come in with their ideas, with their support to tell us whether this bill is a good bill or where they think we need to make an adjustment, we can do it. There will not be a perfect bill. So once the situation arises, we know that there's a need for an amendment 
or so. It is not the constitution where it goes by referendum or something like that. It's just a bill. So a bill that will be passed into law, you can always have an amendment based on the way we will see it to be. But we cannot sit and say we'll craft a bill that automatically will be a perfect bill. I don't see that coming. So I will continue to lobby with my colleagues. I'm not going to impose on them because I, for me, individually, as an individual, I don't see anything wrong with this bill. But if what I see something good may not be something good for my colleagues, I will be open to hear their points so that we can all make that correction because I continue to say that the bill is for men and women. And so now my second question. Uh, a lot of people feel that the bill, as good as it appears, mm -hmm. but it is more Western favor, Western style of life, African culture and tradition, which uh, some who are opposed to its passage feel that uh, it's the state needs more money than acting now. Where do you uh, stand on this? When you, I don't know what you refer to as more Western, but if you say more Western, I want to think the way you're thinking. Uh, for an example, if you say more Western, Western because people talk about the rights of people, so you find it in a Western society where people say, oh, it is my right to do this, it is my, it is my right to do that. So if that's what you're speaking to, that it is more Western, then I will address that situation by saying, even in our traditional, our African setting, as the family, there are times that things will happen, the woman will feel offended, the man will feel offended, he will still call brothers in the village and say, listen, my wife did this to me and I'm not happy about it. She will say, okay, I think I did this to my husband and I apologize, but it was done because of so and so reason. She's not going to say, no, it is my right, no elder should call me to come and sit and talk. So that way, where in the woman will say this is her right, the same way that right will be given to the man to call people to come and sit and listen to what she did or what she had been accused of, it is the same way, please respect me. This thing will bring shame to me if you do it. So I prefer you not to do it, so please stay away from this thing, do it this way. But then again, if you and your wife have that friendship, that mutual understanding, that bond is there, what will your wife that will be yearning to see you after you have been there for hours during the day see you as stalking her? Showing that woman love and affection. Showing that man love and affection. Sweetheart, where are you? I'm in town. What are you doing? I can't look at one of the things. Okay, I'm just calling to check on you to make sure you. Let, let, me come in. let me come in. For example, the African culture mm -hmm. in the African setting, uh, women are used to uh, paying more attention to not talking in an environment where they and their husbands are. Mm -hmm. They prefer the husbands when most of them are talking. And even if sometimes you feel offended, you don't really claim right, right, other than listening more to to them in whatever direction he takes at the end of the day. You go there even if sometimes it comes painfully. Mm -hmm. And and all those who are arguing us I feel that those kind of tradition and thing will be taken away. Mm -hmm. And and two, let me draw you to the issue of female genital mutilation, mm -hmm. which has been a major component that let, let, me pay, let me hear uh, uh what you right there please. And okay. uh, let me come in come in before we reach to that point. Yeah. You said that as per our culture yeah. When we don't say much, we just say listen yes, we just listen to the men who do the talking, right? Yeah. So, for example, there's an issue in a home, and the man is doing all the talking, and the woman is just there saying, yes, I agree to what you say. It's because of that, that, that togetherness, peaceful uh, 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 environment that she wants, so she listens to him, right? If it is the other way around, the man is home, example, the man leaves every Every day he leaves the house by five in the morning, goes to the farm, and after his home, that woman start to harass that man. You went on the farm today, you never went to the farm today. They told me you were in that place and start harassing that man. Do you think it's fair on his part? I will tell you, no. 
Now all the men that was listen to the women whine, and you know what will happen? Psychologically, he might lose his temper and say, I'm trying my best to go to the farm to make ends and yet accusing me. The next thing maybe he raised a hand at the woman. But mind you, that provocation came from the way she was talking to him that turned the whole thing into something else. So it's not about the women sitting. If you believe in gender equality, it's not that we are not going to respect the men. I'm a married woman, I'm a young person, I'm a social life, also I'm a political life. But it doesn't mean that I would not ask my husband. He will call me, where are you? I'm still at Capitol Building, I'm going to have things to you. Okay, sweetheart, you care for me to pick you up, you want me right with you? I would say yes or no, if I'm basic. But the manner in which I will address him, he's either going to take it as something good or as an offense to him. So having that, that mutual understanding, that working relationship is not going to translate into anything that will be violent. And the women coming out to listen to them, it's not something that we want to continue. If we're looking at the world, the way it's changing globally, and we see the need to educate the girls children, we should be able to be free to speak our minds, and the men should understand, or do it in a peaceful manner. So, so if you saying that, then I mean, just take us back to our tradition where the women never used to go to school with Jesse and the men say no. We're saying no. The women should be heard. They should participate. They should be to make us. But we should have that friendly environment. That's the reason why this bill is there to protect men and the women. You're not going to say because today I'm an educator woman. I have the opportunity to be at the decision making table. So I'm going to harass my man. Most of the times when they talk about stalking, let's be practical. The women do the stalking most of the times, not the men. But hear that, oh, this woman has been accusing her husband of having an affair. So the next thing, she said, oh, I'm going there because the same right your colleague referring to, we are legally married, it is my right. And because I heard that my husband is having an affair with his to capital building so i'm going there and a woman will walk here and just bang on somebody door and start raining insults are you going to say it is her marital right to have access to her husband so she went there and she acted in a way because it is her right where your right may, may end another person right will begin from there so what can we do to meet the of this situation we said this thing in as much as you have your right, you should be able to respect the right of someone else. Do not harass this man. This man will not harass you. Do not take because this man is a so quite person. So go to the extent. Some women do beat men. I don't know what other people know. It's real. 